Hey there, folks. Welcome back to another This Week in Photo, Photo Critique. I'm here with my partner in crime, as usual, Mr. Troy Miller here, teasing as normal. I'm a little bit under the weather today, so bear with me if my responses aren't as uh, crisp as they would normally be. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> it might be entertaining actually you know i get to and, carry uh, all the snarkiness yeah you you sir this is me passing the uh the snark <laughs> torch which way is it over this way yeah you're me passing the snark torch over to you so yes please please uh, inject the appropriate oh. amount of snark into this conversation um, yeah, I this... think uh, I think both Frederick and I are quite distracted today because I've got the IEPV open house and Frederick isn't feeling great. So we're just like, our brains are like all over. I got notes everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. So this is this is one of those situations where uh, I'm like, oh, 15 minutes before we got to do this stream, I roll out of bed, wash my face real quick, you know, get in there like, ugh, okay, how do I set this office up again to do live streams? I forget, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, here we go. I think I got it going. If you guys can see and hear me, uh, I think we're good. So, yep. All right, let's do this. Here we go. So this, uh, this photo critique topic was um concrete and steel or concrete and or steel what, what do you think of the uh the submissions we got troy i like them i like them and i like the fact we have a lot of black and white i think i think that's nice somebody's sort of playing to my favorites maybe i don't know i so. thought you might like that i thought you might like that you you enjoy pandering uh, so i'm coming to <laughs> <laughs> troy can be bribed you know <laughs> yes yes doesn't take All much right. either no, no, it's a little black and white. So uh, here we are inside of the community, inside of uh, the Concrete and Steel photo critique. Uh, for the members, you may remember uh, earlier this week, I posted this little video here that was talking about the issues that uh, that were introduced with the, one of the latest circle updates, i.e. an improvement, but not so much for photographers. Long story short is they introduced a, a new space type where uh it's supposed to be photocentric but it's it is photocentric but it has the achilles heel of not allowing you to upload custom aspect ratio images of course yeah. into one one of three aspect ratios i'm like whose idea was <laughs> whose yeah. idea was that you know like yeah. i don't i don't get it so um yeah, yeah. Like, i mean we're gonna have gonna a buffet Instagram. we're gonna have a buffet with all you can eat with one item just one right item. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, all you can eat, you can you can upload all, everything you want, but one tiny plate <laughs> that you got to get everything on. You can't go back either. It's a one way. Yeah. So anyway, um, so I rolled back to the previous way we were doing critiques, which, you know, we'll stick with until they improve that area. They were supposed to improve it. I mean, it was supposed to introduce uh, at a, a time in the future, which I thought was imminent the ability to to have regular or custom aspect ratios and that doesn't even seem like a custom thing it just like it's just let me have my aspect ratios. <laughs> like why do you need to force me into your into yeah. your way of cropping photos right and, anyway. and by the way if anybody if anybody has a product or a service or a thing and they just want frederick and i to complain about it just send it over because we're good at that <laughs> we are we are yeah. <laughs> we, we, should... <laughs> we we're we have lots of opinions. We should actually record some of those rants because you and I like every now and then. So basically, the how it, how it goes, folks, is I'll find some tool like online that is revolutionary. Like, oh, we don't have to use Zoom anymore. There's this new thing that does all this whiz bang <laughs> stuff, and and you know I'll convince try to jump in, uh, Troy to jump in and try it with me, and we'll jump in and play with it. And we're like. Oh, this is crap, man. Look at the video feed quality or the <laughs> audio doesn't work or this. There's always something. And we always end up going back to our standby tools. So, but, right. you know, at least we're, we're willing to give new things a try. So, like Troy said, if you have a software tool or something you want us to put through its paces, we're happy to try it. You know, hopefully it will stick and we won't bounce off of it like we always do. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> or, or, or backpacks, camera gear. <laughs> we hate everything. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. We hate cyber trucks. We hate Apple Vision Pros. Uh, well... we hate... <laughs> so send it to us and prove us wrong. <laughs> prove us wrong, Elon. You know, send us a couple of cyber trucks over. You know, we'll play with them for a year or two and send them back. You know, easy. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, or we could play with them simultaneously while we're driving the cyber truck because nobody would go. do that oh my god yeah i was t chatting with sharky james yesterday he sent me a i think it was a an insta of somebody in a cyber truck doing full self-driving while wearing an app in apple vision pro headset dude and like, yeah you're not doing you know humanity any favors <laughs> I sent him that clip from Wally with all those people on the ship with oh. the displays in front of them just being ferried around. <laughs> like, yeah, imi life imitates fiction, imitates life, right? It's crazy. That's where we are. Yeah, and then and then insert the scene at the very end of Don't Look Up. That would be oh, that would right. be a nice <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, well. All right. Well, let's do this photo critique here. Our first image is from our friend, Mr. Pita Levshin, our com comedic dissident. And he submits this one into our concrete and steel photo critique. This looks like, oh, a, I like crashed, a downed aircraft or something. Like, what is happening? The... Yeah, I I didn't quite understand what this was when I when I first saw it. It made me think of the like the nine eleven memorial. I've seen a couple nine eleven memorials on my on my travels, so it made me think of that. So I'm not really sure what it is, um, but it's cool in in the sense that looking at it, maybe from a sculpture sense, but maybe not if people lost their lives. But um, very interesting and and hard to decide what it is. I I like the dark background. I like the matting. The heavy vignette I think works on this. So, Peter, tell us what this is. It's crazy looking. Yeah, I agree. It does look it. It does look a little uh, weird. La Dunarita in the chat says this looks crazy, and yeah, sadly, I thought of nine eleven. Yeah, absolutely, it does have that kind of twisted steel and metal, uh, tragic kind of feel to it. But like you said, Troy, it is interesting, right? It, <clears throat> excuse me. It pulls us in, and we we're and it so it does its job, right? In marketing. They say the first, the most important, like for example, with email marketing, the most important thing is the subject line, and the only job of the subject line is to get you to read the first paragraph of the email, and the job of the first paragraph of the email is to get you to read the second paragraph, and on and on and on, right? And the job of a photo is its first job is to make you want to see more of it, and this one does that. I feel curious. I want It's mysterious. It's got all that black in the background. I don't know what's going on in it, twisted metal and all that. So this really yep. does feel like it needs a caption, right? Like you see this and you're going to look around for a caption so you can make sense of it. So I agree, Peter. Right. Tell and, us what's up. Yeah, and, and I think that's a good lesson for all of us too. I mean, sometimes our images don't don't communicate, you know, what we want them to communicate, right? Like sometimes a title or a description or something like that or being in context, right? If it's in a museum um that's that's hosting like images around a particular event or something like that that would help but it's it's um it helps us to understand that our images even in subtle ways sometimes don't communicate what we hoped that they would so right right yeah. right yeah we don't see what others see yeah interesting 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 so yeah peter thank you for sharing that i like it i was i thought you were going to say this wants to be in black and white but you know <laughs> i'm glad you did <laughs> I don't think That'd it does because I think we need to see the oranges and the different splashes of color in there to kind of give us some clues as to what's going on, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't think so? You think it would be better as monochromatic? Okay. I, well, I think that I think that you know when we lean into into black and white, what we're going to see is a lot more of the shapes, and we're not going to be distracted by you know the red color. Um, that was my first thought right away, but that would have been obvious. Everybody that listens regularly, they know I would have said that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything, I don't have to now. Is, everything is better with in black and white or bordered. We, yes. we know, Troy. It's yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right, Peter. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Up next is Karen Sweeney. Karen says, I haven't had color. I haven't color graded an image for ages. This one needed it uh, to add a little something. The Finiston, I think I'm, tell me if I'm pronouncing that right, Karen. 
the Finiston Crane and the Clyde Arc, aka Squinty Bridge. I'm sure that means something to people who know what that is. Oh yeah. All right. What do you think, my friend? I, I really like this one a lot. And and what really sort of like um draw my attention was the the arch of the bridge. And then you have over on the left and the right, you have all these squares and triangles. But inside the arch, which isn't a triangle, there's more triangles and diamonds. And so I just thought that that was really cool. Um, I, I would probably on this one, I would probably lean into saturating the reds and the warm tones just a little bit. And that would offset that blue. I like the, the cool tones, but I feel like I want to see them both, right? So like the red sign on the left and some of the sunset reflections, maybe just intensify the reds a little bit um to give it that nice balance but great shot and no i don't think it should be black and white no no of course not on this one <clears throat> what, do, what do you think of the like there's a lot of sky pixels in there are you are you good with that i thought you were gonna say something about almost bisecting the image in half because we know you have a you have an allergy to that so what, what <laughs> <laughs> i have an aversion to many things yes um, i i mean if it was just a blank white sky yeah i would have more of a, of a of a problem with that but i think the crane on the left it needs that space to show how much it's towering over everything else so i think that's actually pretty cool i'm i'm good with the sky where it's at i'm i'm really excited about the center though i mean you could almost crop in the buildings off the left and right and just focus in on the bridge and the tower and the distant building in there as well yeah. so there's a lot going on I was thinking that, right? I was thinking that that there's a I mean there's many shots here, right? But one of the one of the shots within the shot is uh well there's two shots that kind of caught my attention aside from the overall one, which is great, Karen. Um and that's this one. If we if we had the pixels or the optics to be able to zoom in and compose over this middle piece here so that we could see that building in the background and you can post so it's like right in the middle of this little triangle or diamond that it's sitting in and just use that whole thing as a compositional element. That, that, that seems really interesting to me. And then also this on the upper left here on top of this crane, that looks really interesting as well, especially from this perspective because we have no idea what's going on. So just a crop with just that crane in it and lots of sky around it, you know, would have yeah. <clears throat> been interesting. But then, you know, it all fits together into what you did here. So, yeah, really cool. Lots of this is a target rich photograph. Yeah, yeah. And a target rich environment, right? Like it's got such a neat area, so much to shoot there, so much texture. I really enjoy it. Yeah. Good job. I do, too. Yep. Yep. Very nice. Good job. Good job. Okay, next up is Trey Nelson. Trey says, insert, insert something witty here. Okay, Troy, insert something witty real quick for uh, for Trey. <laughs> Couldn't come up with anything, so you got it. I that. wish I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. Done. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the caption for this one. <laughs> Yeah, and if you're old enough to know that reference, you're probably in your at least 40s. <laughs> I know. <laughs> at least. You just dated yourself, my friend. Uh, yeah, I know. It is it is what it is. I'm just barely over 40, so it's okay. Yeah, just barely. It's a decade or so. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. What, what do you think of this one, youngster? Um... um... I think the horizon, well, okay. I got lots of thoughts. Um, first of all, I appreciate the fact that it's black and white. Uh, the horizon is a little crooked, but I think, I, I think that that's because we tried to make the building vertical. Now the building's not totally vertical either. Okay. Yeah. That's what's going on. There's something, something twisty happening. The antenna is vertical, but the right side of the building is not vertical. Okay. I'm looking at a lot of things. Um, right away. That just, my brain sees sees the 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 offness of that, so I kind of want to like fix it. Um, but with that said, I'm really intrigued by the foreground. I think that that's that that's really super cool, and I love all of the like the vehicles and the street and the snow, and um, you know the Samsung building right there in the center. So, mm -hmm. and, and I love the total grading. I think it's a little flat. 
contrastually in the upper half of the image because it looks like you have more contrast in the lower half of the image <clears throat> and i would i would love to see that a little bit more consistent especially on the building um the soft contrast shows distance on the to the horizon that's fine but i feel like the building's a little soft but i don't know what do you think um yeah i agree i think you have a you hit on the i think is keystoning of that building um, yeah, because, you know, shot with a wide angle lens kind of tilted down a little bit. So it distorts that that tall shape into kind of a V with its vanishing point down at the center of the earth or something. Right. Um, but it uh, yeah. So that that kind of gets me. It doesn't throw me off, I think, as much as it threw you off. Um, I think the the overall feel of the shot, I feel like the subject obviously is a Samsung building in the middle right there and then the surrounding neighborhood that this building is planted in is the uh you know the supporting character but i agree i right. like i like the i like the surrounding area i actually like the low contrast feel of this because it makes it feel mm. almost timeless or old timey like i mean you like even like if you, imagine if a, a little bit of sepia was splashed on this image right it would instantly look kind of old timey but then you see a samsung building in there like well <laughs> it can't be that old timey right um, but yeah, yeah, I dig it. I don't know how I feel about the building right in the middle because part of me likes the symmetry of it with the chaos around the building and then the building kind of yeah. anchoring, anchoring it all in the middle. Uh, I don't know if it'd be better compositionally in, in one of the intersections of the rule of thirds on here or just someplace else in the image. Um, but no, I, I do like this composition. I, I like the fact that our, our building is breaking through the horizon. We've got a nice cloud layer there yeah. where the building has a place to go and all the chaos and kind of, you know, it, it looks like um, this was photographed. On, well, I guess that's snow on the ground, right? So it was a wet day, right? So it was kind of wet. Yeah. So it gives you those specular highlights, even subtle ones throughout the image. It even adds a little bit more interest uh, despite the lower contrast of the shot, so yeah, it's not bad. I don't, I don't mind it at all. I, I don't even mind the the keystoning of it. I kind of, I like the shot. It's pretty cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, and, and it just, I, I agree with everything you said. Um, I just noticed as I'm looking at the image that there's a heavy vignette in the top left hand corner and you know down that side. So be careful with that. Um, mm. You know, are we want our vignettes for the most part? uh to not be noticeable so i think that's a probably a bit heavy but mm -hmm. so what do you do in this it's... situation because clearly clearly the artist felt like the that top needed to be less in your face so they burned it down a little bit with the vignette and i can see it in the lower left too down here mm -hmm. it's a little it's dark down there so would you just darken the overall sky like do a not a sky replacement but do like select <clears> the sky and kind of just dial it back a little bit you know, I, I think that if you're going to do a vignette, you have to blend it really well. And and think about this. So a vignette is is really traditionally where you sort of like from the printing days where you burn down the highlights and the shadows go down equally. But in this case, you know, if you have if you have highlights that you don't like, you know, bring down just the highlights, leave the shadows alone so that we don't really see the whole vignette. Right. We don't see that whole circular or rounded burn, if you will. So. It, it, it's all about finding a way to make it as subtle as possible. Yeah. Yeah, when we think vignettes, we typically think it has to be a rounded vignette, because like old time portraits, right? They always have either a dark vignette or a light vignette to draw attention into the faces in the middle of the screen. We see it in other photography as well, but I think, um, you know, you see it often in portraiture or, or that kind of photography. But you're right, right? The, unless you're using it as a compositional element and you want it to be obvious, like I want those edges just to be dark on purpose and I want the viewer to know that I made those edges dark because I want your eye planted right here, then that's great, right? There are no rules in photography for the most part, only suggestions. Uh, but like you said, like we, we're, we're known to say uh, like retouching or vignettes or anything else like that where it's a subtle kind of nudge of the image towards its its idealness um if people know right. that you've been there then it's less effective i don't say a fail but it's less effective if someone knows that oh uh, what a nice cloning job or what a nice <laughs> replacement you did troy <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah 
Uh, like uh, like we say plastic surgery, right? If someone knows you had someone compliments you on your plastic surgery unprompted, uh, then probably not great <laughs> plastic surgery. <laughs> Just say it. What a great <laughs> nose job. It almost looks real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to tell people that. Oh, All right. Oh my God. Up next, and this was Trey. Thank you, Trey. Very cool, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, Nora Zanotinus is up next. She calls this one Weathered Stairs. Yep. Man, I just... <sighs> I really, I really enjoy this image a lot. And um, I, I've been looking at it for a little while. I've been sneaking back to it because I knew it was coming up and I wanted to get a good eye on it. Um, the contrast in this <clears throat> is wonderful. And it doesn't, it, it doesn't feel exactly like a black and white because it looks like the door on the left has a little bit of warm tone in it. So if that's the case and that's true, I like that. I think that's, that's subtle and that's clever. Um, it, it looks like this was taken like in the weather where the wind is blowing <clears throat> and we're getting some streaks. So I'm, I'm in love with it. I love the graphic nature. I love the leading lines, the steps leading up to, to nowhere. I think that's super cool. My only critique with this is, is it looks like, uh, between the snow and the, the step wall, there's a, there's a hazing, there's a softness, there's a fuzz going on there. So yeah, maybe there was some Photoshop work there. And like Frederick just said, <laughs> if you can notice it, maybe yeah. something's wrong. Right, right. You shouldn't you shouldn't be able to see it. Yeah, I, I didn't see that until you pointed it out. You know, I guess my, my brain was looking at those stairs and thinking, man, that's a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Snowy wet steps <laughs> and a wet. Oh, my gosh. Wet yeah. Rail. <laughs> and a wet in rail that that could not uh yeah that could end badly but you know for the shot yeah love it love it this is i love the geometric shapes in here i'm i'm instantly pulled in there's an air of mystery in the shot as well so like where do these stairs go and where are they coming from what's behind that door on the left uh how long has it been since someone's walked up these steps because there's no footprints there and no marks on the handrail so there's a lot of mystery plus the fresh freshly fallen snow in the lower left there too right there's no human there's no trace of humans in here anyway or anywhere uh so i, right. I really like that yeah i like that and i like the distressed nature of the whole thing even those steps like that what is that one a fourth or fifth step up has a crack in it which makes it even more perilous so there's that and then there's there's probably a ton a gazillion other photographs in here uh, at this location, you know, I'm sure Nora took a bunch and she selected this one, but yeah, I mean, the, just imagine the detail shots, like the snow on the rail, that crack on the steps, the doorknob on the left, the, you know, where the snow meets the wall and using that as kind of a compositional element to split the photo. Yeah. So there's, there's lots of little, lots of little bits in here. I like it. It almost feels like a, like a pencil sketch illustration, right? It could very easily be yeah. a pencil <laughs> sketch illustration. Nice. Yeah, I really, I really do enjoy it a lot. I think it has a lot of story and it's amazing. Um, and Nora says, uh, there may have been some snow on the lens, no Photoshop. Okay. Well, that makes perfect sense because it looks like a little smudge there. So very easy to fix, Nora, is just where that little white haze is pushing into the darkness of the stairs. You can just burn that little haze down and it won't look like it's bleeding into that, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, Either way, uh, it's such a cool shot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Looks way like too in, cold. In the, I'm glad I, I have it's, my heater. I think, I think this is one to one, right? It's a, it's a square crop. How do you like the square crop? I think it works here. I, I think the square crop works amazingly well here. Um, and, I, and you know, bringing that up, I want to point out, like, I appreciate the fact that, that Nora, you left the right pole in at the top. Um, you left a little bit of the door in. You corrected all those vertical lines. It's a little bit of the, the, the top threshold of the door or I mean I'm sorry the the header of the door and the threshold so there's just enough information in there um to get a sense I I would experiment with flipping this horizontally though because mm. I think you're going to get a different sense um a different feeling or different mood of what it feels like so yeah you know before we leave this one just a a, a quick thought from you on 
horizontal versus vertical, right? And and just compositionally. So looking at this shot, obviously there's lots of horizontal, diagonal, and vertical lines in here. The one that I'm curious about, and it looks like she she was solving for making this vertical with this this the door edge here and these vertical pipes here for the steps uh, for the hand railing. But then we, we have this crack across the top, which is a very obvious kind of detail in the image. The rest are obvious as well, but the crack is, is adds a little tension because normally buildings aren't supposed to be cracked like that. So would you, if, if you were trying to emphasize that crack, would you leave it kind of not level like it is, or would you solve for making that crack perfectly horizontal and let everything else kind of fall where it's going to fall? Um, I, I would, I would leave the crack where it goes. I mean, it's, it's an imperfection in the wall, right? It's a fracture. So let it run diagonal, let it spider, let it do whatever. Um, you know, the things that should be vertical, like, like door jams, not always handrails, handrails aren't always vertical, but you know, solve for like one thing and let everything else kind of fall in, especially in a, in a image like this, where there's so much distress, um, you, you might not even have a real vertical or a horizontal. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. And lastly, Stephen Sharp makes a good comment on this. He said, it "Looks like a charcoal drawing." Yeah, I agree. Yeah, probably probably more of a charcoal drawing than a pencil sketch, or maybe a little bit of both. I don't know. Very very nice. I like it. Would you print this? Yeah. Can you see this printed and framed and hanging? Yes, I can see everything printed and framed. Oh my gosh. Everything should be printed and framed. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. You have a lot of Most everythings in you, Troy. <laughs> uh, I do. Everything. I do. Can, everything yeah. can be everything, Troy. You got to make a choice. Sometimes. Yes, it can. In my world, it can. <laughs> <laughs> All things are possible and nothing. <laughs> All right. Uh, coming up next, uh, is this Trey again? Troy put another. Trey put another image in here. Should we allow this? Should we allow this? Because this is the second one. Yeah, we knew a real quick one. Yeah. Okay. You start. All right. All right. All right. So looking at this one, very similar to the other one, right? So um, industrial. Um, so this is this is a good continuation of the the conversation about horizontal and vertical, right? Because we've got look at the left, the left and the right buildings are leaning a little bit to the left, right? Or at least it feels right. like it. Uh, I don't know architecturally. I don't know the, the building on the right looks like it, uh, it may be correct is just architecturally throwing us off because of the way it's built. But definitely the building on the left, unless it's a trapezoid or something, it is, it is off kilter. Plus our horizon is leading to the left on this one. So all those things are kind of taking me out of it. I think number one in a shot like this, I'd want that horizon straight in shot or, you know, just, just right across. Um, and maybe not so much horizon in there. You know, a shot like this, all this space at the top, is this really doing any service, this, this blank space up here? Is that really doing any service to the image? And then when you think about the image, what's the subject of this image? Like in that other one, we knew it was a Samsung building. Everything else was, was the supporting character. For this one, not so much, because it could be the overall just scene. It could be this building on the right or this building on the left or probably this rounded building right here. I think that would probably be the subject. And if so, why not just get rid of this leaning tower of Pisa over here and crop in so that we just see, you know, maybe it's just this semicircle of this building and this line of traffic going into the distance. And that's our shot, kind of the line and the circle coming together and everything else is the subordinate. Uh, I feel like there's, there's, I don't know who our subject is in this shot, plus the, the fact that it's leaning to the left a little bit is taking me out of the shot. What, what do you think? No, I, I agree. Everything you said, um, I would, I would say that, you know, sometimes when we shoot images like this, um, the, the, the sense that we feel when we're standing there looking over at this mass expanse, it doesn't translate photographically. And I think that might be something that's happening here. You know, I'm sure that this is a spectacular view, but we have to like focus in. And I think you're right. Cropping the horizon off would be a stronger element. Also, you know, like in this, it looks like maybe the the frame was squared up across the bottom, like with the the lines of the street. But then that made oh, the right. horizon crooked. Right. So in <clears throat> in that case, you know, pick the stronger element that shouldn't be crooked, and that's the horizon. Like it's always the horizon. So or 
a little little tweak and you can fix them both you know using a perspective um, oh, in lightroom totally. or capture one or something yeah 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 yeah, I didn't even notice that at the bottom. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And the fact that I didn't notice that the bottom was was bang on horizontal um, is a testament to the fact that that's not part of the the, the subject right. of the photo, right? So, which maybe right. should have been maybe cheating towards making that street perfectly vertical. I mean, drawing a line down the middle of that street and just making sure the photo is is uh, vertical properly, or using a horizontal line of the horizon. Or I would, like you said, the we're humans, right? So we're automatically going to look at that horizon. Unless you have one leg shorter than the other one, you're going to assume that that horizon is tilted incorrectly when you see it like that. Right? <laughs> what? <laughs> what kind of analogy is that? Jeez. I'm just saying, you know, my photo instructor Wait, in the military used to say that all the time. You're like, hey, Johnson, you got one of your legs shorter than the other? What's up with this slant? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, everybody has a leg shorter than the other, but we're not going to go into that. Uh, yeah, well, no, one, do, nobody's yeah. perfect, literally, right? <laughs> nobody's perfect. Well, not mine. <laughs> yeah, mine either, I'm sure. Yeah, whatever. I like my. Yep. I like not being perfect. It's great. I and know, what I is agree. perfect? Nice Troy Miller. Don't get me started. What is perfect? Is there such a thing as perfect? Uh, uh, hmm. Perfection <laughs> is uh, oolong tea. And a chocolate chip cookie there for you February. Go. You got to, I don't know what's going to be perfection for March. I don't know yet, but for All February, right. that's it. <laughs> I've All decided. Right. Hey, I have declared. Make, maybe we should make a uh, perfection or photo or uh, our photo critique topics. <laughs> like, what is perfect this month? <laughs> All right. Yep. So, okay. So that's good. You know, and there's lots of, I don't want to spend too much more time on this photo, but there's a lot of little things in here like, like even cropping, if you Trey, if you had the pixels, like even cropping down here so that can you see my my cursor? Yeah. So like yeah. these buildings are framing on the sides, and you just see kind of the compressed city in there with a little bit of this rounded building at the bottom. Like that's the photo that could be really interesting. Yep. Just like right right there, if you had the pixels to do it. But that, that that's interesting. Maybe that's a critique topic, Troy. You know, just. Show us your original yeah. shot and then show us uh, a cropped version that makes it a completely different photo. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Well, but before and after. <clears throat> right. Yeah, exactly. Like a like a before and after shot. I like of, it. Yeah. Yeah. This is what it looks like. And it, they both should be it, great shots, right? This is what it looks like. This is the shot. But then, and it could be a shot that was already submitted, right? Just revisit that shot reprocess it crop it and and try to evoke a different mood from the shot than the original done so could... that's the new topic <laughs> look at that look at that <laughs> i have to update hey, my means... calendar now that means i don't have to pay you this week that's great <laughs> oh right right <laughs> damn it <laughs> thank you all right troy has never been paid for this just fyi so he does this because he loves it all right. right because i because i love one of you i'm not going to tell you which one <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> all right coming up next is mr craig stamfley uh oh wait a minute uh there are no photographs Trey, at the very first one uh I, think so. I just wanted to see if there was a comment in here about that one okay uh craig stamfley says careful now <laughs> oh, look, at, look at look at that pandering with the uneven border you know he put that in there on paper. <sighs> I love this. I love this so much. Um, I really do. I think that first of all, you know, applause to uh, Craig for his detail. Um, it's it really is well done. I mean, like the 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 sharpness and the composition elements. I think the trees, the middle ground, the the, the distance, <clears throat> so well done. I would like to think image competition has has led him to some of these things because uh, this this looks like it's ready for image comp. So I think this would do really well. Um, that being said, uh, the only place I'm really struggling with is the clouds in the top left corner. They feel heavily burned down. Um, if that's natural, it doesn't feel natural. So I would, I would, I would work on that a little bit. It just feels a little too muted and a little too flat, but mm. you know, compared to the contrast we have on the horizon in the trees, the clouds don't have that contrast. So it feels unnatural to me. Um, but that's it. Yeah. I mean, other than that, 
dig it. Do you see a little halo on this on the horizon line on on your side? I feel like I can see a little bit of a halo down there, uh, or maybe that's just the way it was. But I don't know. It's drawing. Me I, I don't. It. I'm not really seeing a halo. Um, it's hard to tell sometimes in the stream because it it probably sharpens. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Even circle yeah, does so weird things to our images. I, I, uh, you know, I, I agree. I, I like the vista of this shot. It feels very like Montana, you know, but without, if you take that road out of there, all the concrete structures in there, this would be like a shot from the tundra of Montana, you know, in the middle of nowhere. Montana is just like a, a very barren country-esque place, parts of Montana, not all of Montana but it has places there that are just very wide open like this. And uh, this, this harkens back to that. So for me, I, I love the pop of the contrast in the lower bit. You know, and like you were saying, it kind of drops off up here. I don't know if that was intentional or not. And if so, why do we have this kind of split of the clouds unless a, you know, a storm was rolling in and that's why we have the title, careful now. Um, right. <clears throat> but, um, you know, when I, when I look at the shot again, you know, my non-competition eye, I'm looking at the shot and I instantly start wondering, okay, what's, what, what, what's, what's that space in the right for? Like, what, what is that? Is that, is that a handle? Cause you're going to print it and you don't want fingerprints on the rest of the image. So you got to grab it by the right side. That's what that's for. <laughs> or is it for text? You're going to put some text over there or, or a QR code. If you want to buy this, we can put that over there. Like, what is that? Like explain to us, Troy, it, oh, it, competition <laughs> master, these uneven edges. I don't mind it when it's at the bottom. Cause I kind of get it. Like if that, if that wider border was at the bottom, I'd feel, it'd feel more motivational poster-ish to me. When it's on the side like this, um, I'm not sure. It feels like one of those, like, I forget what car that is that looks uneven. It looks like it has a bra strap on it, the way it was designed. Like, it's like, it's like one, I forget what, I'll find the car, but it's a car that was designed in such a way that it literally looks like it has one shoulder strap on and one down, the way that they built the, the B pillars in the car. Oh, how funny. How yeah, funny. but I look at this and I kind of feel like, okay, like, I don't want to be taken out of the shot for a compositional element like this, but if it makes sense to have it in there beyond a competition and a judge, you know, that is that knows more than I do about composition will see that and just get all excited about it, right? I, I want to know where that excitement comes from and why I'd want to ever consider doing an uneven border like this, you know, especially horizontal. Vertical, I can understand. <laughs> horizontal, I'm not too sure. You'll about. never, so, you'll never understand, Frederick. It, I'm it's, probably you'll not. never, <laughs> you know, you'll never understand. It's like, it's like somebody who drinks milk. I can't understand it. Like there's just, it doesn't work, you know, um, or coffee. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, well, I mean, milk does a body good. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, we won't go there. So, <laughs> In competition, um, what this is, is is having a, either a chin or a little fatter border all the way around. What that's doing is it's a very, very, very subtle nudge to there's more space on the right to the image. And in the PPA bubble, right, the image competition world, um, a lot of judges and a lot of a lot of presenters and even a lot of galleries like they like this. They they like this subtle nudge like, oh, there's a lot more space over here. We're letting you know there's a lot of space that's going on to that to that side. Um, but not everybody likes it. So or gets it. But I like it. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to see. I mean, that'd be a, that'd be a good a good experiment to to have a, a version like for this photo, for example, I have a version of this photo, uh, like maybe three versions and have people vote on it. So one like this, the original, and then another with the photo with the equidistant border, and then a final one with no border at all. And just take a random set of a good number of people, maybe 50 people or something, and have them vote on them. Like which one resonates with you both? Obviously, it's completely subjective, but it would be a good touch point to see if like non non competition minded people that are just looking at this image on face value and you know maybe they're from this area and they can critique it on the accurateness of the photo and all that um to see what they say about it 
Like, I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious. And even in the comments of this video, right? If you folks, you're watching this and you see this, comment in the, in, on this video, even in the live chat, of those three scenarios, this one, even border or no border, which, which would you prefer? I'm curious, very curious. All yeah. right. I know Troy's voting for this one, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though. I mean, the shot overall is great. I mean, it's it's Stampley, right? The only thing it's missing yeah. is is a, a you know a person in there somewhere kind of posing. Speaking of people posing, Paolo Bassetti comes in with quite a, or Iron Gal, quite a large specimen actually. Yeah, this looks like uh, it's like one of those Burning Man. Yeah, well, obviously not, but this looks like a Burning Man statue that's ready to be burned. Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know if there's these things exist somewhere else in the world, um, but they have like sculptures like this in Vegas, which are really cool and they're really big um, and they're all like stainless steel. So they're super cool to photograph. So um, I love this shot. I think that I think that Paolo found a really interesting angle. I like the fact that the hand is very prominent. I mean, this would be a fantastic pose for a human if you're mm -hmm. going to do that. So um, mm -hmm. my only my only critique, if it was a person, was I don't like seeing the truncated left arm. You know, it's it's kind of weird, you know, just seeing it like as a stub. But that doesn't that's not something that Paolo can can control here so much. So um, great composition. I, I love the shot. The clear background is nice. So it gives us a nice balance against the sky and stuff. So and a nice presentation. He always has a nice border. So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, I think this is really cool. And it, I mean, I, and I know this is a large statue, which makes the fact that there are hair strands up here coming down. I don't know if you can see that on yours, where there are actually, I believe these are strands of hair coming down from the statue, which yep. is a, just a high level of attention to detail. And Paolo caught it. So that's, that's really cool. Um, agreed on this truncated appendage over here. If this was a real person that was photographed you know this pose is great but we definitely want to see more of the uh of this arm over here i don't know that this would come off quite as good if it were a nude because it would be a little bit more on the i'm guessing pornographic side right if this was a nude body shot from this angle um but like even not even looking in that direction the fact that this arm is obscuring the face but we can still see a little bit of face i love that I love the hand, you know, that's closer to the lens and everything else, making it appear bigger. And like you said, just the blank canvas that it's plopped on, just it adds to the overall feel of size of this. Even though we have no other references to tell us how big this thing is, the angle and the fact that it looks like it's shot against a blank sky lets us know that, oh, this is probably a towering statue that's up there, which makes it even more impressive. And I love the, it's got a slightly lower-ish contrast, right? I mean, those blacks could be black and those whites could be fully white or whiter um, to make it pop a little bit. But I like the fact that it's not. I like the fact that it's it's leaning into the, the sort of gray, slightly lower than 18% gray background that it's that it's set against. Right. Yeah. So, right. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Well done. Well done, sir. Well done. <clears throat> All right, Paolo. And, ah, is that it? Let me reload. I'm having so much fun. Reload the page, see if we have any stragglers in here. Any stragglers? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple new ones. Yep, there's like three. <clears throat> One more, yep. All right, coming up next is Jim Peters, 48 minutes ago. Look at Jim coming in under the wire. Right at the hour, Jim. Uh-huh. All right, he calls this one the act of creation. Oh, we're creating con concrete here. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. What do you think? Almost like lava. Yeah, this is fun. Um, God, it reminds me of pouring concrete, which I don't ever want to do again. Um, I, I really enjoy the one, the color palette right away, just really, really drew me in. I love the fact we get that warm tone reflection going on in the background. Um, I'm just I'm really bummed though that the concrete there isn't there isn't sharpness anywhere you know like it's all slightly out of focus the blur from the concrete pouring in is great but the the background and stuff is still even soft too so 
um, I, I just don't see any place in there that's really sharp. So I'm kind of bummed by that. But compositionally, color harmony, weird shape and form. I love that. I love that. And if you don't know it's concrete, you're not going to know what it is. So right, right. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, I wish I wish this was sharper. Um, and I wonder, I wonder if that can't be corrected with a tool like Topaz or something, Topaz Sharpen to, to bring that. If I feel like it might be able to be, re the, the sharpness might be able to be rescued with a tool like that. And if so, um, compositionally, I feel like the, the, the motion that, that Jim's caught with this concrete flowing in and then mixing in, because obviously this is probably swirling down here or something, um, that to me is a photo. Like I want to see, maybe it's a square crop, and we're losing. We lose most of yeah. the stuff off to the left here, and it just becomes about this concrete flowing in, you know, versus where it's spreading out to. Just sort of the action of the impact point right here. And if it was sharp, then that would that would tell us a lot more about the photo. Yeah, I like it. Very, very concrete. Yes. Yes. It's so funny. So I'm looking at this on the big screen and yeah, the, it's obvious that there's a lot of motion blur in here and it's slightly soft, but scaled down a little bit on my other streaming display, I'm looking at it and it looks, it looks sharp almost because it's smaller, right? But it, it definitely doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't um, appear to be as soft at its smaller sizes, obviously. Yep. Yeah, I agree. All right. Mr. Peters, thank you. <clears throat> All right, and coming up next is Mr. Phil Lewenthal. Phil, Phil says, Columns in the Bay. This is from 2010 and it's probably my first exploration of long exposure photography. Oh, that's historic because he's come a long, long way since this. Wow, I know, I think I know where this is too. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, actually, what was, what was funny is when I first looked at it, because I didn't read his title, when I first looked at it, um, it looked like what are the columns were actually like gaps, like in a concrete wall. And I was trying to figure out like, how's the light coming through the gaps. And then all of a sudden Ooh. it like flipped in my head. I went, Oh, that's under a pier. <laughs> so, um, I really like it. Uh, very subtle, very, very creative, a, a little flat in the contrast along the top edge. I think it, it, it draws us out of the frame. So I would lean into, you know, darkening down the shadow end of that and bringing the highlights down just a tad, keeping us into the image a little bit more. But God, what a what a cool shot, Phil. I really like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it was the it was the shot that it was his radioactive spider bite shot, right? <laughs> Got him. Started yeah. In his long exposure stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Not much to say about it. Yeah. This is again, historic just because this was your, the start of your journey into long exposures, Phil, you might consider printing this and putting a little caption next to it in the house. Cause it's a, uh, it's historic. Um, yeah. Compositionally looking at it, you know, I, I, only, I even hesitate to even critique a shot like this cause it's so, it's so important and historic. If I was to say anything about this shot, I'd say, um, the, lower contrast and how we were losing contrast towards the top of the frame versus down at the bottom. Not that I'd want it to be even, but I feel like I'd want maybe just a smidgen more contrast at the, at the top. Um, and then I guess the other thing would be this, this triangular bit who over here off to the left, that's sort of taking me out of the overall experience a little bit. I don't know if there's anything you could do about that other than cropping it out of there. And maybe that's the move, right? Maybe crop it to like right here to get rid of that because you still have these pillars and, you know, maybe go that way. But even as is, I think it's great. I like it. I know where this is and it's uh, it, it definitely brings me back to that exact spot. So very cool. Cool. Yeah. And I agree with that crop. That's a good that's a good suggestion. Cropping off those left two pillars and that little triangle in the top left would really strengthen the composition a lot. Yeah. 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 Because it. It's all about being direct, right? What do you What are you trying to say? What are you trying to tell these the people that are looking at this in the future? Um, what are you trying to tell them to look at? So the more things you have in the shot, the the more confusion there is, especially if they're not they're not cohesive and they don't directly relate to the subject that you're trying to convey. Then it, it adds a bit of confusion, and sometimes that confusion can be good, right? It adds interest. Like in that first shot we looked at was. 
it was confusing that you know peter's twisted pile of whatever it was confusing because we did not have a subject but that confusion was the shot it was just the overall randomness of all this twisted stuff told us exactly what peter was trying to tell us with the shot right right all right and last but not least is our friend mr stephen sharf and before we close it with stephen just going to reload one more time make sure we don't miss anybody anybody okay show more comments and Stephen Scharf, uh, Benicia Bridge. Let's take a look. Nice. Wow, look at that. Yeah, it's cool. I feel like I can just yeah, touch I like. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to fly a drone right down the center of that. That'd be really cool. You um, can just get out of there real quick after you're done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do it while you're on the highway, right? Fly it over there, and then <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not encouraging that. That is illegal, ladies and gentlemen, to fly drones over roadways and bridges like this, especially in yes. California. Yeah. Um, dig the shot. Uh, really enjoy all the leading lines and the triangles. And I love the vanishing point, you know, being so low in the horizon um, and giving emphasis to the sky. I mean, normally, you know, if that was just like a barren white space, not having any kind of clouds in it, that would be kind of a bummer. And I, and I also really enjoy not only how we have the bridges leading us into that vanishing point, but the gradient in the sky is doing it as well. So I, I like that, you know, so the distant point is a little bit brighter. My only suggestion for this image is if you look to the right, the space you have between the closest pillars and the edge of the frame is pretty bright. And I would say, you know, bring that down and then bring the next one down a little bit. And that way you continue with that tonality to the vanishing point. But it's really subtle. It's not a lot, maybe maybe like half a stop or something. And that would just keep you in the frame. But um, mm -hmm. really enjoy it and the intentionality of the crop. I was going to say that, yeah, the only comment I have to give on this one is I love the graphic nature of it. And Steven, Steven's always spot on and very, very meticulously precise with, um, with you know, the, the, the post-processing, especially the, the exposure of the images. You can tell he pays a lot of attention to shadow details, highlight detail, and of course the composition in the crop, which, which I look at this one and I feel like the knee-jerk reaction to, uh, you know, maybe a less experienced photographer or maybe just a photographer with a different vision would have been to put the intersection of that vanishing point in the middle. Maybe not in the middle of the photograph up here, but at least in the middle of the plane that it's sitting on down here and kind of lean into the, the symmetry of it all. Stephen chose not to do that, even though it was like severely obvious that's, that this could be pulled off as a symmetrical shot, you know, and just have these big triangles on either side of the image. He chose not to do that and gave us three different size triangles in the shot. So we've got this big one at the top and then this, this one on the left and then another one on the right, right there. And they're all different sizes versus putting them together and using that as a graphical element. So that takes, that takes a, some thinking outside of the box, even from a subconscious level, because subconsciously we want things to be sym symmetrical. Like we find beauty in symmetry and to step aside literally and figuratively to make a shot like this is, you know, it takes some, some, how did I say, huchpa, chutzpah, in order to make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got the chutzpah. It takes some chutzpah to get the, <laughs> to get a shot like this and step outside of your creative kind of norms and pull this off. And then on top of that, just the fact that the left, I'm looking at the left side of the screen and it feels, you can feel the contrast almost, you know, uh, you know, the blacks are black and the whites are white and, you know, it's just crisp all the way through. And then you look at the right bridge and it's lower contrast, right? So the contrast of having contrast and lower contrast is in itself contrast, right? Which, which brings us <laughs> even more into the shot. So I don't know. That may be my flu talking, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah did you mean do you agree do you see that like the low contrast on the right yeah the higher contrast on the left you know yeah. well yeah that's that's a highlight on the left and a shadow on the right so it's supposed yeah, to be that way exactly but yeah that's... it creates balance yeah 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 love, yep. love it very cool there's Steven, a lot going on 
night shot. And, and he puts your board around there for you, just little crumbs, some crumbs for Troy to satisfy <laughs> your your need to have everything contained. Oh, like, oh. <laughs> it's because it's right. Everything has its place and no wire hangers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, you're kidding. <laughs> it's the Sudafed. It's the Sudafed. I can't I'm not say saying anything. I'm just going to sit here quietly. Oh, you think this is bad? Wait till we do our AI live stream later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so we'll leave it right there. Uh, thanks, everybody, for participating and sharing your images. This, is, this has been great. Um, any final thoughts on this one before we kind of go over what the next one's going to be, Troy? Uh, well, we should pick a winner. I think we should pick. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you for yeah. saving my yeah. brain. Yes. Uh, yeah, let's, let's pick the winner. What's our winner? <laughs> well, my favorite is is Craig Stamfield's. Um, mm. uh, you know, aside from the the heavy right border, which I do I do like a lot. I really enjoy the tonality, the freeform curve of the road that's in there. Um, I think that it's I think that it's really really well done. And I like it. And it's something, it looks unique, right? It's a unique perspective. It's got like multiple layers going on in there. Um, it's it's just, it's nice. I just really like it. It's tasty. Yeah, I like it. It's crispy. It's like a good, It's crispy. Nice yeah, it's like, a, chip. it's like a barbecue chip. There you go, right there. Perfect, perfect. If barbecue <laughs> chips were monochrome. Cool. Uh, I agree. I like that one too. I mean, I like a lot of these, but we'll go with that one. Because um, they're, they're, the quality of these photos. I mean, if we just go back, let's just scroll through. It's hard to yeah, hard to pick. Yeah, I mean, look at these. Starting with Peter's and then uh, Karen's, awesome. Especially Karen, I want to see that crop with just the diamond in there. If you have those pixels available, and then uh, Trey Nelson's, you know. Let's just stroll back. This one, I thought you were going to pick Nora's. To be honest with you, you were gushing. <laughs> I, it was you were, tough. You were gushing it was... like a like a fire hydrant on this one. <laughs> It's really tough, I, you know, and, and for me, like the reason that I would pick like samples is because I think there's there's like we have the elements of depth and and space and vastness where, you know, nor is just flat um, a little bit. And, and so, you know, it's a very, very subtle difference, very subtle, right? It's just a personal preference, just very subtle. But yeah, yeah. And, you know, this shot, when I look at it, it, it makes me a little bit uneasy. You know, I think. And I think because my brain is not sure that the perspective of those steps is. <laughs> I know they are. Yeah. I know they are, Nora. But I'm looking at it, and it feels like they should be more flat towards the camera. It's hard to articulate, but it feels like the steps are wrong somehow. Like an artist was drawing this that didn't quite understand vanishing point or something. <laughs> you know? We yeah. should be behind the artist, you know, when you're drawing these steps. So. I don't know. Yeah, it's this is really cool, which makes a better shot because it pulls me in, right? And we're still talking about it. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, they're all great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're yep. all great. Very good, very good. Cool. So we'll leave that right there, Troy. What's our what's our next topic? For the uh, before and after, uh, I think that it would be. I think that would be such a really really fun topic. So present an image um, horizontally where you have your before image and your after image um, in the in the same frame. So we can kind of see the transition. So if you want to lean into like, look how much Photoshop work I did, great. Or if it's just, you know, here's, here's how I tweak the image to get it from, you know, camera, what the camera saw to what my mind's eye saw. What, what is my, my artistic interpretation, right? So it's going to be less about the quality of the image and more about, oh, we see where you took your vision. You know, so if you're color grading or you're cropping in or, you know, with a little, a little tiny description, like little tiny. So Frederick doesn't have a lot to read. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know, I'm still, I'm still yeah, trying to get through yeah. my, my hooked on phonics course. It's, you know. No big words. Okay. No big words. <laughs> no big words. Yeah, I agree. So the only thing I would add to that topic, and I'll put this in the post is, before and after could be like, this was the raw file. This is the original straight out of camera and this is what I did yeah. with it. Boom, next side by side, right? Um, or it could be, this is what I originally thought this shot 
could be. This is the best at the time and back in whatever year that I thought this shot was going to be great. And mm. this is what I think is great from that file now. Like, or, you know, something that just to show, just sort of, sort of a passage of, um, you know, your own, your own artistic sensibilities over time, right? Back in the day, I thought this is what looked good to retouch a portrait, you know, but now I look at it, it looks like a Barbie doll, you know? So let me redo it and now it looks more realistic. <laughs> And, that, and you know, a yeah. lot of that is not, it's not, it's not going to be the fault of the photographer, right? A lot of it. Like we were talking with Peter Levshin at the last uh, TWIP member mixer, and he was talking about how the, some of the tools that are available today, like the denoise tools and, you know, gigapixel AI. Masking. Yeah, and masking, <clears throat> of course. Like in Capture One, the, the, the masking superpowers we now yeah seriously like i mean this is a whole show that we should do but just the the fact that that we are i mean we're cybernetic as photographers these days because like the, the the question i put to peter was given no tools would photography still be as exciting to you today like we got hit by an emp or something and now you ever all photographers are back to dip and dunk processing and dark rooms and doing all the things would you still do it or are we too spoiled by all these magical resolution enhancing sharpening and <laughs> you know all the magic tools that we have in our tool belt to make a good image so yeah that'd be a good question to explore what about i, I you, think Troy? we would, would lose it would you? I mean, are you are you a photographer at your core? And if you didn't have all the amazing Dude. Nikon tools, you had to go back to a Nikon F3 and processing and printing with your deck tall and doing all that in the dark room. I would love that. Would you do it? I, I, I would. I would. I would love that. I would love that. And here, here's a non politically correct thing to say. Um, I think we would lose eighty percent of the photographers that are yeah. photographers if they didn't have their digital. Uh, safety nets. Uh, I think that if people had to go back to making a living or creating the same level of art with film, they would run for the hills because it's different. Yeah. 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 I don't want to do it. Yeah. I don't want to go back. <laughs> don't yeah. make me do it. <laughs> yeah, I think you would. I think you would. Because regardless of what you say, I think you at your core, you're an excellent photographer who understands lighting, composition, exposure, and all those things don't change. Right? It would just... Yeah, and the expectations would change as well because you, yeah. what people consider an amazing photograph would go back to what we considered an amazing photograph to be in the 80s or 70s, right? Versus it would be, today. It would be interesting. It would be it interesting. Would, yeah. 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 It would oh, be that's super a plot interesting. Of a movie. That's a movie plot. Yes. I, I have an idea. travels back in time and brings oh. all of his tools back to the 40s with him. <laughs> I have an idea. When you come down and do your workshop, uh, yep. which we're doing in, in June, uh, unless Jeez. the date changes, maybe maybe that'll be part of the part of the shoot is that you have to you have to shoot and only what you can you and we'll put tape over the rear screens like you can't chimp. Well, people well, now they can see inside that doesn't work anymore. Hmm. We'll have to work on this. JPEG only, maybe. Yeah. With an image critique at the end. I like that. You know what we could probably do? We were just brainstorming. We're at the end of the critique. And we'll end it in a second here. Um, go find some really small memory cards. <laughs> That's it. Find some really small memory that will only fit, you know, <laughs> like 10 high resolution images on there or something. You know, this is a, just to simulate the restrictions that we had when we shot film. We were like 36 exposures, right? If you're shooting... 35 millimeter yeah. or 12 or 24 if you're shooting medium format, right? So let's restrict it and say, okay, you know, here's your subject. Here's your memory card. <laughs> <laughs> you get, yeah, 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 yeah. You get five then you shots. you can delete either. Like if you, it should be a, a write only, right? You can't, you can't delete just like with film you can't delete once you take that once you press that button you're committed man yeah imagine well, that. It, back, back when i shot weddings i had to i had to keep in mind because i shot hustle blood for like 10 uh, almost 12 years um i had to think every single time i pulled the trigger that cost me a dollar cost yeah. me a dollar and i yeah. and i i was i was you know cup of noodle poor back then so i mean a dollar every time i threw prints out i'm like oh yeah. 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 Eh, yeah. We'll, we'll have to brainstorm yeah, something. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean that when I was when I was active duty Air Force uh, as a photographer, our, and we were processing and printing our own stuff, color black and white, and E six or slide film. And it changes you as a photographer when you know you're out in the field and you're shooting and every time you click, that equals more time later that you're going to, you know, be investing in processing and printing and all that. So you get very careful with your shots. You're like, do I really need <laughs> do I really need to use another roll of film because I'm going to have to process it, right? But, um, well, cool. We'll leave it right there. Folks, thanks for joining in on this critique. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to it and thanks for all the comments that are coming in the comments help as well to feed the algorithm and uh yeah the next critique is coming up on uh let's see we're on the seventh here so this next one should be not on the 12th but on the 19th of february february 19th at yep. noon pacific we will be executing our before and after critique details to follow yes. inside the community so that should be interesting. Yeah, it doesn't have to be something new. It could just be, I would encourage you to go way back. Like if you still have shots from when you first got a digital camera, assuming you have a digital camera, like when you first got it, you started shooting, go get one of those shots and see if you can yeah. either rescue it or make it better or just to kind of go back to those old raw files and use either Lightroom or Capture One or to whatever app your post, post, post processing app you're using use that app on those old files and see if it can do something different that that will be right. interesting that'll be interesting cool all right Troy, but, give us uh give us parting shots and then we'll shut we'll shut this one down Ooh, parting shots walk slow and read yes and he's been saying that every every time i'm <laughs> Every time I'm leaving Target or someplace like that, I got a little Troy Miller on my shoulder because I'm always I always walk fast no matter what. I don't know why. I'm just like feel like I gotta I gotta I got some place to be. I know why are we walking slow, but every, like normally I'm walking out of Target, walking fast. I'm like I really don't have to be anywhere right now. Why am I walking so fast? You know, and I have Troy on my shoulder yeah. saying. Walk nice. slow and read, Frederick. Walk slow. Well, I, I, I you know, just very quickly, the history of that is, yeah. is me and my buddies were camping in Yosemite. We're in back country in Yosemite <clears throat> and we're trekking. I mean, like we're just hauling, but we come around this corner, stop for a water break. And there's this dude just sitting, lean up against a tree. And uh, we're talking with him like, hey, man, we got to go. We got to get there. And he's like, hey, walk slow and read. And I thought that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. But it, it took me like another decade till I matured enough to understand like, Oh, just calm down. Enjoy your space, right? Where you are. I made a giant metal sign. It's in my it's in my living room. So walk slow and read. You know, you need you need to have a conversation with Nicole because Nicole <laughs> Nicole is that driver that is always in a hurry, even when she's not in a hurry. She's like always in the left lane. <laughs> like get out of my way. She's like, hey, why are you racing? You're like, we just just relax and enjoy the ride. No, I gotta get there. You know. <laughs> How funny. So How we're funny. similar. We're very similar. Cool, man. All right. So we'll leave it right there. Thank you, everybody, for joining this. Remember, like, subscribe, comment yep. on this video. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this next one. Before and after is our topic for the next one. And um, yeah, we'll we'll knock that out. That should be fun. Troy Miller, thank you. Thank you for your service, sir. It's been Thanks, sir. All right. All I'm right, liking. Everybody. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're liking and subscribing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody go so you can like and subscribe to this video. All right. Take care, everybody. Peace. Bye.